The K Jazz Show Sundays on Kofifi FM 97.2. The K Jazz Show is always in pursuit of artists and creative in the jazz space, and we circle the globe looking for the story behind the story. And this week, we find ourselves in the United States to uncover the mystery of Roba Dope Records. Of course, meet Lewis Marx. He is a CEO at Roba Dope, and who be- and began, in fact, his career from the warehouse floor to the New York Stock Exchange. Spent the days on the exchange floor, which were then followed by the nights at the Ritz, the Lone Star, the Bottom Line. In fact, any place with music. It wasn't long till Lewis got into the apparel manufacturing business and he met the founder of Robodope Industries, which was a company that was affiliated with Robodope Music Entertainment. We fast forward to 2005 and Lewis has purchased the record label and armed with 18 years in the music business, Lewis has persistently advocate, advocated for musicians who find themselves marginalized by the mainstream business of music. Of course, Robodope has released over 600 albums during this time, a curated collection of music that reflects the true value value of contemporary music and art. A record label, a clothing brand, a media company, a support network for independent artists like Chief Ajua Ramsey Lewis, Terrace Martin, Snarky Puppy, including many others, form part of this incredible catalogue. He joins us today as we look back at his life's work, including taking a walk down the musical corridors of Ropa Dope Records. Lewis, welcome to South Africa. Welcome to Kofi FM 97.2. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining us. You know, you've had an impressive career timeline from working in the family business to the stock exchange, you know, then apparel. But one constant thing about this journey in the different spaces was that music was always with you. Would you say that you were predestined, you know, to be in the music business? (laughs) That's a a good starting question. Um, It's possible. It didn't feel that way. Uh, I grew up in a a fantastic time uh, in the 60s and 70s. Uh, I, I come from a large family and I had older brothers and sisters who were always playing different styles of music. So it was uh, it was impacting me at a very early age. I think I bought my first album at seven or eight years old. And uh, I had an older brother, uh, Roper Marx, who was very um, attentive to music and very persistent in, in guiding me uh, as to what I should uh, purchase and, and what I should listen to in those early days. So uh, it also was a social time when music had power to really adapt your life, to change your life, to make a choice about, you know, or to, to determine who you were and, and to, what your place was. Uh, the 60s and 70s, I, as we look back, I can't, I yeah. can't overstate the power of that. So predestined to be in the music business, I don't know that, that that's, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, it, the thread is definitely there. Yeah, absolutely. And and I'm particularly interested, you know, in the advocacy work that you did and you still do, you know. Let's unpack your work with the artists that were marginalized. What examples can you share? Hmm. Well, uh, for me, let's let's tie those two things together real quickly, if you don't mind. I'll take a moment. Yeah. Um, the, the music that I listened to, the music that I went out to to see in New York City and in Philadelphia in the early days, um, there there was a lot of social messaging uh, in the music, and that steered me uh, in a direction, uh, sort of away from uh, mainstream commercial kind of interest, even though a lot of them were very successful. Uh, so that landed me in a in a in a in a realm of discovery. Um, you know, I can go all the way back to like uh, B- Band Aid, for example, uh, and Live Aid, and and some of the concerts that were happening uh, around social issues. So, so that was there uh, when I returned, or when I got to the music business and took a look at it. I I saw a, pretty much an an unlevel playing field, uh, which is no different than many of the the ways the world has worked and other businesses, but. Specifically in music and entertainment, it, it seems to be skewed to a very select number. So I, I tried to set up an organization that would lift all boats, so to speak. Uh, and uh, having simply having the label open to choosing uh, releases based on the individual, the quality of the music, uh, the uniqueness of the music. Mm. Uh, rather than, and the cultural messaging, rather than will this 
album be a hit. So that decision right there starts us off with with advocacy. Um, and I, I think that there are, I, I mean, there are so many examples. Uh, I think if you speak to a good number of uh, artists who have released music with us, they're very grateful that someone was there to release their record and have it at least have some some amount of international attention. Yeah, uh, yeah. In, in in a business that works generally differently than that. You know, which ties into the next conversation piece. You know, the year is 2005. And with almost no experience, you purchased the label and, and you're now sitting in the office. What was the first order of the day, you know, as you embarked on this new path? Keep it open. <laughs> Keep it open. Yeah. Um, those were very, very challenging times. Uh, Rope It Up was a, is, was a dynamic and exciting brand right out of the gate with DJ Logic, with the Philadelphia Experiment, with Christian McBride and Questlove, with eclectic records like Tin Hat Trio. So, and, and also with a clothing brand that was recognized by people who were core music enthusiasts um, and, and a little bit off the, the commercial path. And so the idea was let's, let's preserve this brand. Uh, and you know, that was really, uh, looking back a monumental task because those were, those were super challenging days, mm -hmm. uh, after Napster and the beginning of iTunes and all, and all of that. So yeah, yeah. it was keep it open. How do we keep this open? And it might still be the, the, the same yeah. uh, first order of the day. Well, an incredible, you know, feat. I think, you know, when you think about it with everyone, you know, trying to get in, you you need to 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 keep things afloat. You need to carry on the legacy of the Robodope, you know, and the growth of the label has been astounding, you know, uh, over the years, boasting an amazing catalog of artists. And I'm very interested in quite a few artists there. I mean, beginning with the South African bassist composer and uh, vocalist Bagita, Kumaro, who has probably been on the roster longer, you know, let's talk about how you discovered him and, and what was it that caught your attention? Yeah. So, so my, my A&R process, uh, artists and repertoire, as they say in the industry is to open my email, uh, inbox and, and see who has messaged me, right. Yeah, yeah. Because of the power of the brand, which I'm very fortunate, uh, for, uh, I take an approach because I'm not a musician. Uh, I take an approach of, of connecting people. So just about uh, just most of the things you see are not cold calls. Someone has referred us and someone has messaged us. So there's a gentleman, a uh, musician in Philadelphia named Max, Maxfield Gast, uh, whom I've met uh, previously, uh, who's connected in with some of the Philadelphia artists. And he brought uh, the, the record uh, from Bikiti Kamala to us. And he really didn't need an introduction. Um, I was there as a youngster when all of that hit. When young Americans first got a taste of a very powerful taste of African and South African music in, yeah. in, in the mainstream, in yeah. the mainstream. So, and of course, his bass playing is, I, no, we still don't understand it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> how it's done. Uh, yeah. But, you know, this is, this is, this is, a, this is a legend, you know? Uh, I mean, often the, the band leader gets all the legend credit, but yeah. Giddy is yeah. a legend. So Absolutely. it was very simple to just try to, you know, just tell them what we do. If it's right for them, it's right for him. Then, then off we go.
Kofi FM, we're chatting to Lewis Marks. He's the CEO of the prestigious New York-based Ropador Records. And before the break, you know, we're chatting about how he met, met bassist Bagitu Kumaro and how he became part of the label. And since then, you know, Lewis has, you know, has more South African artists on the roster, like Lindas Kakani in Tunzin Vubu, and now to include Mbuso Koza. Now, the question is, Lewis, how difficult or how easy has it been to break these artists into the American market? And how have they been received? Uh, it's interesting. I mean, we're just a small player in in, in this process and we take a, a different approach um, than 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 many labels do. Most not that I've worked with any of them, but most of them, you know, work around an album, a, a record uh, and then pr- and an artist and then promote with with advertising dollars and certain promotional uh, tools uh none of which are are available or chosen to us really or by us really um rope dope is a brand that spreads around the world based on our previous work and based on our networking direct to fan so for us uh just releasing the record uh to the rope dope audience uh and also giving the artist that uh label association and name for them to continue their pursuits in touring uh that that's that's the plan i mean we we have in-house publicity and we we connect with magazines we have a reputation amongst people in the industry yeah so we're literally it's sort of a hand-to-hand person-to-person approach rather than a broadcast advertising approach yeah uh so is it difficult yes it's extremely difficult i think the artists benefit from uh, recognition or acceptance by association with the other people that are on that have released with rope uh but but truly because we're in the independent sector of the music business our mantra our motto is support independent artists so really we're here as a toolbox and a support organization for people to do it yeah. so it's it's a collaborative effort if the artist is persistent in advocating for themselves with touring and 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 other parts yeah. uh then we work alongside that and when they need help they they contact it, it it is challenging and yet we do reach people yeah and speaking of artists you know the show um is listened to by artists that are also coming up in the jazz space and and one could be sitting and wondering as you and i are chatting this afternoon how do they submit music to Rope Dope, and what what does that process look like, and 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 what determines their eligibility? You know, as it were. Interesting. Um, I'll make a couple comments about that, but also give some some direct advice if that's okay uh, to artists who might be listening. Yeah. Um, my selection process is probably different than some other labels, as I've mentioned already. Uh, in that, you know, it's not can will this be a hit? Um. Rope it up at present. I need to say this is already wrapped up for for all of next year. So uh, time timing is is extremely important. So the advice pieces of this are one: be be aware of timing and and get your information out as early as you possibly can. Yeah. Uh, two: make sure your information is complete. Uh, and and three: understand that everyone's busy. You know, I attended a a a seminar with music supervisors. Uh, and they were really music lovers. They're just busy. So for example, try not to put attachments and MP3s in an email. Uh, <laughs> make sure your message is, is simple enough, but clear enough. I've gotten one line. Hey, my music is dope. Check it out. That's, I mean, I'd like to know a little bit more. Um, be respectful of a person's time. And you know what we often do with media, for example, because it's the same thing. If we send something to a downbeat or, or New York Times or NPR, we'll, we'll pick a track and say, you know, I, I think that this could be a good starting point for you. If you just drop in on track three, uh, that might pique your interest because that, you know, shows that you're respectful of their time and right. also saves them time. Mm-hmm. And also it's very nice to understand who you're emailing prior to sending information. Yeah. Um, I do get sort of off the wall, you know, music that would never, ever fit the label. And I, and I wonder what what a person is thinking. So. Yeah, it's really yeah. just he- basic human common sense, but you have to, but be careful about it because first impression is very important. Absolutely. Kofifi, we're still in conversation with Lewis Marks. It's all about rope dope records as the cover story, the Sunday, and we're reflecting on the life of this label and the work that has gone to, you know, as uh, we celebrate music and jazz here on the K-Jazz Show. <laughs> Thank you. 
The digital age, Lewis, has presented the music business with avenues like streaming on Spotify, Tidal, and even, you know, Apple Music. And more and more people are buying, are not buying physical CDs. So how has the label adapted to this change? How do you navigate this, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, regarding regarding the uh, physical versus digital, um, you know, assumption, um, I, I want to say, first of all, that most of what you read in the press about statistics from the uh, record business are probably are, are either untrue or misleading. Uh, most of these are written by tech companies or companies who are competing in the tech space who want to get attention. And they all want to promise us that the future is now and that the past is going to disappear. So if we throw that out the window to begin, we start. The big crash in CD sales happened years ago. And people who still listen to CDs are still buying CDs. It's yeah. a question of reaching them. It's just not mainstream. Uh, you know, we work in genres that aren't going to be pop or top hip hop acts. And so we have to acknowledge that and get the music to people in whatever format they want it in. If that's CD, it's CD. Um, our CD sales are growing. Mm. Uh, if it's vinyl, it's vinyl. Our vinyl sales are growing. However, it's, it's, it's a little bit more financially challenging. Um, if it's downloads, which are substantially growing in 2022 and 2023, by the way. Mm. Um, so the, the, the mainstream market, the streaming market, while it can be extremely, uh, uh, while it can be lucrative for some artists, yeah. what it's really serving as, is a way as a discovery mechanism. It's radio in a certain way, right? Mm. Um, we can reach corners of the world that we wouldn't order. The broadcast imprint is huge, right? Correct. Um, you know, we have fans from Mongolia messaging saying, you oh, thanks. I found you on this service. You know, it's great, but it can't be your, the only piece of your strategy. So we, you have to have a, just a more complicated and broad strategy yeah. uh, to deliver music in whatever way we, we use Bandcamp if constantly because it's very effective in that way. It's sort of a collector circle where you can get CD, vinyl, download, and stream all, all at in once. the same place. Yeah. 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 And a very yeah. reasonable company to deal with. Well, I enjoy, I think I also enjoy the, the, that kind of reach, you know, and you kind of hear it here, hear it there first. You know, it, it really is an efficient service, actually, you know, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But anyway, mm -hmm. where to from here? For the label you know what are some of the activities on the horizon and will we be seeing more african artists on the catalog yes um so we we've through a comp I'm, you know i'm not exactly sure you know how we got here i'm i'm really loving it though um uh, linda sikakani's record came out a year or so ago matanzi mvubu um we have muso koza's record coming up uh on november 17th uh you know performed and and co-produced uh with Deduzo Macatini, which is an incredible honor for us. Um the powerful uh musician and also ambassador uh and 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 entrepreneur, I might add. Mm. Um so really excited about that. And there there will be an announcement in within the next two or three months about our expanded plans in uh in South Africa, but also in the larger uh, on the continent as well mm. and other mm. other regions in Africa. I'm I'm I just tell people to stay tuned for that. Mm. Uh, in addition, we're coming up on our 25th year, so we're going to start our wow. 25 year wow. uh, retrospective. There's so much in this catalog, not just recorded music, but interviews and discussions with artists and video content that has either not been released or kind of gets lost in the in the in the shuffle of the all of you know the, the internet yeah uh, so we're going to kind of showcase those and bring those back around uh we're going to make some shorts wow uh which are n using the medium to do exactly the opposite of what tiktok is kind of doing to music and right. putting some real cultural statements in but, you know some of our artists have made some comments about society and music in the world over the years and so we'll clip some of those 
So we're just gonna gonna roll through that. Um, and then it, also in 2024, maybe early 25, we will have our next installment of the experiment series. last going on and of course we look forward to all the exciting developments and and wish you and Robert Oak team you know all the best with that you know as a parting shot you have I've been listening to a specific playlist you know um, that you have on one of the streaming services 
Are you actively participating in updating these though? We, we have not uh, in 2023. Um, you know, it, we, took, we took some time to, to contract a little bit after mm. COVID. Mm. Um, we, made a, we made a strong decision that growth for the sake of growth was not really going to get to the end game that we want. Uh, I, I think the major shift in rope dope at this moment in history is that we're acknowledging what we've become or what we really are. Yeah. And what we really are is a, 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 a curation uh, network, uh, a museum or a, or a gallery, if you will, of some of the finest music, contemporary music of the last mm -hmm. uh, 25 years. And we want to acknowledge that more and sort of stay put. So I think as we come into year, you know, 2024, we, we will see more of that playlist organizing, but the original intent of those playlists was more like, you know, how can we get more people and grow and grow and grow and grow? Yeah. Uh, and we're really kind of, we're exhausted from chasing that, that, <laughs> what, yeah. that tech grow, grow, yeah. grow thing. Yeah. I'm just going to sit back and, and, and focus a little more on, uh, on the quality and the individual artists uh, a little bit in 24. Well, we can't wait. You know, we'll be watching from where we are sitting here in Johannesburg. And thank you so much, you know, for joining us on the show this afternoon and sharing, you know, a little bit about, you know, the mystery that was rope dope you know, and of course, for sharing the wonderful music that comes out of there. And we'll definitely be sharing here on the K-Jazz show, you know, as we, we continue to celebrate the best of jazz and the best of the, the music that comes out of rope dope Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you. I appreciate it. He is the CEO of Robodope Records, Mr. Lewis Marks on the KJS Show.